beer simulating enthusiast. My name is Aton and I'm here to represent UPN Racing on behalf of the Simulink Challenge 2020. In this video, I'm going to show you how Simulink is backbone of the development of a four-wheel electric vehicle. This vehicle needs three elements. First, it needs a torque vectoring program that, depending on the torque demands and the vehicle status, it calculates the torque to be delivered at each wheel independently and also at the right moment that it's need to be delivered. Then, this vehicle needs an electronic control unit. This ECU will not only execute the torque vectoring program, but it will also manage the rest of the systems of the complete vehicle. Then, we need to be sure that this electronic control unit is secure to be installed in the vehicle. To do so, we have to make a hardware in the loop configuration for that ECU. These three things have one in common, and it's called Simulink. Let me show you how it's done. Welcome to our Simulink desk. Here we have all the necessary components to make our Simulink project. First, we create a plant model of the vehicle. That, together with the speed code real-time target machine, will let us substitute the vehicle with this machine. Via CAN communication protocol, we will make the ECU think that it is being run in the real car. However, it is really being run by the speedboat machine. Then we create a torque vectoring program in Simulink that it is introduced as a function in a state flow chart. This chart is the vehicle brain and exported via PLC coder and is introduced in the ECU. This ECU will manage the complete vehicle. This is how we make our hardware in the loop testbench. Each time a new torque vectoring program is created, it will be tested here before being implemented in the car, just to be sure that everything complies with the safety standards stated by the competition. This is the layout of our hardware in the loop configuration. As you can see, the vehicle plant model, which is in the host PC, is connected via EtherCAD communication with the speed code machine that, at the same time, is connected via CAN communication protocol to the electronic control unit, making it think that it's been run in the car. Let's now take a deeper look in the vehicle plant model. The vehicle plant model is divided in five parts. First, the driver, actuators and log data. Here we have the log file from previous tests or the manual actuators, that either one of them will be sent to the ECU via CAN communication protocol. Then we have the vehicle dynamics block in which we calculate the longitudinal dynamics using seam escape blocks and then we calculate the lateral dynamics using powertrain block set blocks. Then we send that information to the ECU via CAN communication protocol and the ECU calculates together with the torque vectoring the information to be sent back to the model which we receive using a speed code special blocks like CAN read and CAN unpack. Finally, we have the visualization and information that will be used with Simulink Real-Time Explorer. When the model is ready, we connect it to the target PC, build the system and deploy it. Here in Simulink Real-Time Explorer, we have a small interface. We can execute the program that is being run in the speedboat machine and we can accelerate the vehicle, break it and make it turn. We can either use it manually or with a log file from previous run. This log file let us reproduce the same test to different torque vectoring programs. And if I go manually, we can see here how the torque vectoring, if I turn right, gives more torque to the outer wheels than to the inner wheels. Here we have the state machine of our vehicle made with a state flow chart. The torque vectoring program is a function inside a state and its form of initial torque, yaw control and traction control. The yaw control will adjust the torque at each side of the vehicle in order to achieve the objective yaw rate that the driver wants. The traction control will look for the maximal grip at each wheel. To do so, it will use this function in which calculating the slip ratio and then estimating the vertical force, we can know how much torque can be delivered at each wheel and at each time. Finally, we export the state machine via PLC coder and introduce it in our TTTech ECU. This is all from our side, thank you for watching and thank you MATLAB, SpeedGoat and TITTECH from the support that they are giving us. Goodbye and see you next time.